All right, you gotta listen. All right, so Brandon and I did the baggage space industry. So traditionally, the space uh, has been dominated by government contracted companies, and it's increasingly becoming an uh, area for profit for private companies. Uh, so NASA is probably it's considered by a lot of Americans to be like a leader with space innovation, but increasingly it's becoming involved with uh, private companies because it, uh, it's trying to find more efficient and cheaper ways to get things done. And so as the technology gets uh, more developed, there's going to be more and more private companies that are trying to make a profit. Uh, these are the major sectors of the space industry. There's satellite spacecraft launching services and space tourism. And there are many more, but these are the main ones. And a lot of these private companies um, work on multiple uh, aspects and not just one. So the satellite industry is probably the oldest uh, part of the space industry. Um, there's 6,600 satellites that uh, have been launched since Sputnik, and you can see all of them. And uh, 3,600 of them are still in orbit, and only about 1,000 are still operating. Um, these are a bunch of acronyms that they use for uh, satellites. So there's low Earth orbit, medium Earth orbit, high Earth orbit, and geosynchronous orbit is when the satellite uh, orbits the Earth in one day. So for an observer, you would see it pass the same position in the sky at the same time every day. And then non-geosynchronous is when it orbits, uh, it doesn't orbit in one day. And geostationary orbit is a specific kind of uh, geosynchronous orbit. And it, it's when the satellite is orbiting along the equator, right in between medium and high Earth orbit. So uh, 35,786 kilometers. And for those, for geostationary satellites, if you looked at them in the sky, they'd be in the same point uh, all the time. And so there's a lot of trade-offs uh, with what kind of orbit the satellite has. For low Earth orbits, it's a lot cheaper because you don't have to launch it as high. But, um, and the signal's a lot stronger too because it's closer. But you don't have it in your field of view all the time, like with geostationary orbit which is more expensive because it's higher up, like it's always in your field of view. And this is just a breakdown of uh, what the currently operating satellites are used for, so mostly for communications. And that's on your handout. And uh, this is just like, these are just a bunch of logos of really big satellite companies. So there's a lot of companies that are involved with operating and manufacturing satellites. And the satellite industry is not only the oldest, but it's the biggest industry, uh, biggest sector of the space industry. Last year, it made 190 billion in revenue. And it's kind of interesting. It, uh, the growth of the satellite industry is outpacing the global economy and the U.S. economy. And the main segments of the satellite industry are satellite services, satellite manufacturing, and ground equipment. And it's kind of taken for granted, uh, satellites are, because they're distant and you don't really see them, but they're a really important uh, part of daily life. Uh, satellite services involves everything from uh, like cell phones and mobile devices that use those, use satellites, and uh, satellite TV, and radio, and GPS. And satellite manufacturing, or satellite services is uh, like $115 billion in revenue. And satellite manufacturing is 15 million, and that just is building satellites. And ground equipment is all the devices that use the uh, satellite services, so cell phones and uh, uh, satellite disks and stuff like that. And that's uh, 55 billion dollars. And Orbital is a really big satellite company, and it mainly specializes in manufacturing, but like a lot of companies. Uh, it's involved in other parts of the industry too. And last year it made 1.3 billion in revenue. Um, this is one of its satellites, the SES-8. And it's a really massive uh, 3,200 kilogram satellite. And uh, 
Uh, they just had SpaceX put it into orbit, which is another company I'll talk about. And uh, they put it in geostationary orbit over uh, Asia, so they're going to have more communications coverage there. All right, and now to the spacecraft industry. It's still mostly dominated by government agencies uh, due to the high risk and cost of all the programs, and it's a lot smaller um, uh, sector compared to the satellites because um, private companies would rather invest in a technology that's solid and that is really well known, like satellites, instead of new types of spacecraft that are doing completely new things out in space and the technology isn't 100% and they don't have a guaranteed um, success and profit through them. So um, the government's still the main contractor for these spacecraft. And a really big uh, company with the spacecraft industry is Lockheed Martin. And they also do a lot more than the spacecraft, but it is a really big part of their company. And they have 98% of their contracts from the government. Um, and they had a revenue of about $45 billion in 2012. And they have three really big um, spacecraft that are going on right now. There's the Maven that was just launched about two weeks ago. And it cost about uh, $485 million. And it's going to go to Mars and orbit in its atmosphere and take readings and give us a better sense of why Mars' atmosphere is where it's at today and how it got there and where it was. And then the osiris Wright spacecraft cost about $800 million. And this is a spacecraft that's going up to the asteroid Bennu, and it's going to take a 2.1 ounce sample, a uh, core sample out of the asteroid, and then it's going to put it in the capsule and send it back to Earth. And this is a really big um, step in the spacecraft industry world because we haven't gotten a rock sample from anywhere other than the moon. And this is the first sample that will also be extracted just using the spacecraft and not just being an astronaut going and picking up a rock and bringing it back with him. And also that program, the OSIRIS-REx, will give us a better understanding of how our universe forms and it could back up the Big Bang Theory or completely mess it up. And then another really big program is the Orion spacecraft and that was $3.5 billion. And this is a reusable um, multi-crew um, spacecraft, and it's going to be the future way of how humans are going to get up into space since we no longer have the space shuttle. And it's going to be a reusable capsule that can be used for many different things. So this is the, um, the launching industry is one of the smaller sectors, but it's growing really quickly. Uh, with a 35% growth rate, and uh, so it's the most quickly uh, growing uh, sector. And it just involves uh, launch vehicles putting cargo, so satellites or spacecraft or even people, into orbit. So this is just its growth over the past few years. And SpaceX is one of the really big uh, launching uh, companies in the launching industry, and uh, so it's called Space Exploration Technologies Corporation in its full name, and this year alone it, it's made an estimated $5 billion in revenue, which is quite a lot, and a large portion of that is from NASA contracts, and it actually made $1 billion for one single launch, and the guy in the picture right there is Elon Musk, who's the founder of SpaceX. So in recent years, there's been a lot of focus in the launching industry on reusable rockets because when you expend a rocket every time you launch, uh, the expensive materials that go into making the rocket are just uh, expended and it's really costly to do that. And so if you make them reusable, you can make, uh, save yourself from a lot of different costs and uh, improve your profitability. And the Falcon 9 right there and the Falcon Heavy are two examples of reusable rockets. And uh, they also make the Dragon capsule, which is that one right there. And it goes on top of the Falcon 9. And uh, 
they just recently attached one of those to the International Space Station. And one of the cool things about SpaceX is uh, their company goal in the long run is to terraform uh, Mars so that uh, people can inhabit it, which is a pretty cool and ambitious goal. All right, and then the space tourism industry is a relatively new industry, and their goal is to try and get civilians up in space for space tourism. And there's currently 41 companies that are competing in this industry. And they're hoping to expand this industry, but it's really cost <laughs> And then here's uh, what their predicted revenue is going to be. So if they do uh, a couple flights a week, they're not going to make hardly anything, about $300 million. And then if they do um, a flight a day, they'll make $600 million. And then if they do multiple flights a day, it'll be $1.6 billion. So they're really hoping to make $1.6 billion. And then a really big company is Virgin Galactic. And they're testing suborbital uh, tourism and with the hope to eventually have orbital tourism. And so they currently have 625 space tours signed up to do it. And this has a predicted revenue of $125 million. And each person will pay $250,000 for a flight. Oh, wow. And then here's just how they're planning on doing it. And so they have the White King 2, which is this spacecraft right here. Or it's more of like a plane. And this is a computer model of it, but this is the actual thing. And it's two fixed wing planes that um, are connected at their holes with a single wing. And then it has the spaceship too, which is right there that'll be connected to it. And then they'll, the plane will fly up to its highest point and then the uh, spacecraft will detach and then fly around for about two and a half hours and come back down. So I'm just a little interested, like, as far as safety in the private industry, because everyone knows that in a private industry, you have to make a profit to survive, where the government can kind of take their time a little bit more and put a little bit more money into safety. Is, is there a concern of moving too quickly in the private sector as far as uh, space exploration? Yeah, uh, but the FAA, the uh, Federal Aviation Administration, has, like, really heavy regulations to prevent just that from happening. So it's a really heavily regulated uh, industry. So. Okay. Um, do you know how those reusable rockets from SpaceX actually work? No. It's <laughs> 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 Thank <laughs> you.